William Wallace was born in 1270 in Eldersley, Scotland. Young William was born of lesser noble blood as the second of two sons to Alan Wallace, a Scottish knight and minor landowner. During his childhood, William, his brother, and his father went to investigate a meeting that was occurring between the English and the Scottish nobles. They discovered a terrible scene. The English had murdered all the Scottish nobles, hanging them from the ceiling. Alan Wallace and William's brother rode off with other Scottish landowners to avenge this injustice. They were both killed and William Wallace was left alone. Wallace's uncle came to take him away and raise him. William learned Latin and French and other subjects under his well-educated uncle. During the late 1280s, England continued to invade Scotland, as Scotland had become more vulnerable after the death of its king, who had no successor. William eventually returned to his father's land after he had grown up. Scottish nobles from his clan spoke of resisting, but Wallace was not interested. He only desired marrying his childhood love and raising a family. Soon after he returned home, English guards were granted prima nocti by the English king Longshanks. This gave the knights the right to all Scottish brides on their first night of marriage. This right would bring William Wallace to the mouth of the dark cave he had been living in. After secretly marrying his wife to avoid her terrible fate, an English guard raped and killed Wallace's wife. The rape and murder of his wife stung like the glare of the light. The light, such that of the sun, illuminated William Wallace to England's disregard of Scottish freedom. This act of brutality inspired a vengeance within Wallace, who was now leading the resistance that he had previously refused to join out of fear of losing the peace and happiness he had always planned to be in his life. Wallace was just another unenlightened prisoner in blissful ignorance before the murders of his father and wife. Everyone he had ever loved was murdered by the English, and Wallace was prepared to fight for freedom. Wallace led an uprising against England's oppressive regime as a militia leader. His comfortable life prior had acted as chains that restrained him from realizing his potential. He gained respect from the Scotsmen and was able to bring back Scottish rule to parts of Scotland through his efforts fighting in the War for Scottish Independence. William Wallace shed light on other men who had yet to realize their own ability to fight for their freedom. In May 1297, Wallace slew William Heldrig, the English Sheriff of Lanark. On September 11, 1297, Wallace and his co-leader Murray achieved a stunning victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. The Scots won because the English had to cross the narrow Stirling Bridge, so the Scots were at an advantage. The battle left the English with 5,000 dead on the field, so it was a shattering defeat for them and a crucial victory for the Scots. Wallace went on to lead a destructive raid into northern England, which did little to advance the Scots' objectives. However, the raids frightened the English army and stalled their advance. By March 1298, he had emerged as guardian of Scotland. His glory was brief, for the English king, Edward himself, was coming north from Flanders. The two men finally met on the field of Falkirk in the summer of 1298, where Wallace was defeated. By September 1298, Wallace resigned as guardian of Scotland in favor of Robert the Bruce, Earl of Carrick and future King of Scotland. It's rumored that Wallace traveled to Rome in the years following, but his exact whereabouts are unknown. By 1304, Wallace was back in Scotland and involved in skirmishes at Hapru and Earnside. He managed to evade capture from the English until August 5, 1305, when John Tementeth, a Scottish knight loyal to Edward, turned Wallace over to English soldiers at Roybiston near Glasgow. Wallace was transported to London, where he was tried for treason and for atrocities against civilians in war. He responded to the treason charge, I could not be a traitor to Edward, for I was never his subject. Wallace was taken from the hall to the Tower of London, then stripped naked and dragged through the city at the heels of a horse to the elms at Smithfield. He was hanged but released while he was still alive, drawn and quartered, emasculated, eviscerated, and his bowels burnt before him beheaded, and then cut into four parts. His preserved head, dipped in tar, was placed on a pike atop London Bridge. At any moment of his torture, he could have muttered mercy, and the torture would have ended. He never did, though, because he saw the importance of himself and the power he as a figure had over the future of Scotland. William Wallace is remembered because he reminded people to fight for freedom, even through personal sacrifice, and that the common countrymen of Scotland could change a whole nation. A leader is not defined by nobility, but passion, courage, and the demonstration of these characteristics. Sons of Scotland, I am William Wallace. 
William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, I've heard. He kills men by the hundred. And if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his arse. <laughs> I am William Wallace. And I see a whole army of my countrymen here in defiance of tyranny. You've come to fight as free men. And free men you are. What will you do without freedom? Will you fight? Right? Against that? No! We will run! And we will live! Aye. Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live. At least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to train all the days from this day to that? for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom!